All right, so today what we're gonna do is see how we can model a simple liquid in a glass. We'll also go through the material um, and the rest of the setup as well, so you have a good understanding of how to set up something and make it look realistic when it comes to liquids in a glass, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's kind of the end result of what we're gonna be shooting for today. Now, when we model this, our liquid, even our glass, won't be as complicated, but you'll have a pretty good idea of how to start here. And then also when it comes to the materials for the liquid, the lighting, even the render settings are something we'll have to consider. Um, and so that's what we will be taking a look at here. So starting with our simple glass, this is actually just a glass from the, the asset browser here. So you can follow along if you would like. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is switch my render settings over to Redshift. Okay, um, and I already have uh, a basic setup here with an area light um, and a dome light just to give me this simple look here. Um, so the, the modeling of the glass is essentially already taken care of, and the same will be true for the liquid. We are going to use the glass itself uh, to make the liquid. Now, um, I believe the glass comes out of the Illustrate or uh, Asset Browser is a loft. I've gone ahead and just made it editable. Uh, now, what I wish I had done is actually increased some of the segments here so it was a little bit more round, um, though I suppose in a pinch I could always throw this in a subdivision surface to um, round it out even more. I still think we'll be fine with something like this. So now what we're going to do is make our liquid, and the way we're going to do that is by going into polygon mode and we want to select the inner polygons here those are going to be what we actually turn into the liquid so i'm going to use my loop selection by hitting v and then going to select and loop and then choosing say one of these bottom loops so that way i can now grow my selection and have it kind of fill in both all the way to the inside there as well as outside so i'm going to hit um, u y now to grow this selection until it gets all the way up to the top there and what I need to do now is kind of duplicate the inside polygons here, which I'm gonna do by right-clicking and choosing Split. Now, it doesn't look like it's changed anything in my glass because it hasn't. And so we'll just call this glass just to simplify things. This I'm gonna call liquid. And what's strange about this is if I just solo this here, um, we have our liquid, it's open up top, and our normals are still facing um, their original direction. So what we're going to want to do is reverse our normals, right, which is all the way down here so that the polygons face the opposite direction. And um, we will need to close this off, but before we kind of close the polygon hole here, we want to decide how far up our liquid should be. And really it kind of comes down to what type of liquid uh, we're creating here, you know, because if it was something like water, it's going to go pretty far up. Maybe sodas a little bit further down. If it was something, say, a scotch, it might be much lower. So um, definitely think about that. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is, I'll hide the glass here for a second. Let's probably do something maybe about kind of two thirds of the way up. So I will right click, go to loop path cut, and then choose something maybe like right there. Okay. Back in my loop selection now to select these polygons, and I'm going to delete them, and then close polygon hole by right-clicking, choosing polygon hole, and doing that. Now there's a couple of things here we can do to give this just a little bit more detail. Um, I'm gonna stay in polygon mode, make sure I go to one of my selection tools, say brush selection, select that large polygon we just created, and I'm gonna inset this just a bit, so maybe something like this, and pull it down just ever so slightly. Um, you know, if you've ever really looked at glass, the this liquid, there's a little bit of surface tension, so it can be a little bit higher up on the edges, and then we'll also bevel that edge as well. So I will switch to edge selection for that. Go um, back into loop, actually, not loop path cut, but just loop selection. Now go to my bevel tool and just bevel this out a little bit, something like this. It's actually keeping my previous settings of having three subdivisions. Um, and so, yeah, that's going to look nice. That's going to give us a little bit of extra detail. All right, just that little bit of a curved surface there. I'll bring back my glass. And now if we render this, we'll see, okay, our glass is there. Um, our lighting is there. Uh, but 
we need our materials now. So in our material manager, um, I'll just create new materials for this. I'll start by just hitting the plus sign and this I will apply to the glass and it's gonna just be a glass material, okay? So that will be pretty straightforward in our node editor. With our standard material here, I will just find transmission, raise that to one. And there you go, we have our glass. What you wanna keep in mind is there is a default roughness value of 0.2, um, which I'm gonna lower quite a bit, not quite to zero, but almost. So say something like 0 0.05, just so I get a little bit of softness on those reflections. And so that's our glass. Um, and now we're looking at our liquid. Um, let's start to create a little bit of a liquid material first before we kind of go in and start talking about what we're gonna want to do with that. So plus sign again here, honestly, probably could have just duplicated our glass since that is how we will start. Um, with our liquid material, um, I'm gonna take the weight down to zero. I should have done that on the glass just to be safe, um, but it's more important for the liquid uh, since we are gonna be working with transmission um, color. So back down to transmission, which is essentially refraction, and I can apply that to my liquid now. Um, I'm gonna take the roughness down to zero on in our reflection here. Once again, should have probably just duplicated that glass material. And we can now add a transmission color. Um, now, once again, depending on the liquid you're kind of going for, wine, um, scotch, soda, you know, orange juice, Mountain Dew will have an impact on the color. And I tried to choose something a little bit more saturated, at least to start here, to show you that we are getting some weird artifacts. And that is because right now our liquid and our glass geometry is intersecting each other. And that is not what we want. Now I'll spare you all the scientific mumbo jumbo and the renderer details um, about that. If you really want to um, dive into that. What you want to look into is what's called nested dielectrics. Uh, ultimately, though, we need to make our liquid slightly larger than our glass here. So what I will do is come here to a right view, choose my liquid, and come here to the coordinates. And, you know, you could scale this manually, but since the axis isn't centered, um, although we probably should do that, so why don't we? We'll go tools, axis, center axis two. And that will center it. But um, I just like to come in, the, in here to the scale value and just type in 1.01, 1 .01. all right? That way we can um, get that just a little bit larger than the outer wall here. We may need to make it just a bit bigger than that, but we'll see. Uh, and turns out we don't, okay? And this is what we're looking for here where it looks like the liquid's going all the way to the edge. Um, if I unhide some other, glasses and we look at these from a little bit different angle um you can kind of see uh the difference okay where uh once again the liquid doesn't look like it's going all the way to the edges whereas if it's slightly larger um it does and this is really what we want this is the realistic way of doing it though look if i'm being honest you know unless you're very particular you know to look for this you're probably going to think nothing is wrong with that um, so the only reason you would want to change this. The two main reasons would be one for the artifacting, because that would be problematic, especially in an animation, um, and two, to make it as realistic as possible. That's why uh, you would scale that up just a bit, okay? I'm gonna hide those other ones for now though, since um, it's just gonna take longer to render, and we still have our material. Uh, now, granted, just doing a colored liquid like that can look pretty good, okay? So, you know, you could leave it as this. Um, depending on exactly what you're trying to achieve here. But really, I guess I can just dock that down there. Um, really what we want to do is work with the depth here. Now, previously we would have probably had to uh, use a little bit of subsurface, but now we can do it in our standard material just in the transmission. And what we want to do is adjust the depth. Now, before I do that though, I am gonna come in here and just kind of desaturate this color. And while I'm not sure this is the final color I'm gonna want. Um, we can always change that a little bit later. And what we're gonna be dialing in here is as light passes further through um, our liquid, it's going to get darker. And so 
what we're doing with this depth value is specifying at what depth it should be this color. And so if you put in a very high number, you will get liquid that is very shallow, all right, looking, and that uh, the color is not very bright or saturated because at a depth of five centimeters, what we're seeing is that it's going to be this color. And I don't know the exact size of my liquid. Let's see. So we can see, you know, it's not terribly far off from that five. So it's, you know, four centimeters high, nearly five, and about seven meters um, along the X and Z axis. Okay. But what we'll see is as we go with a lower value here, we get darker and darker liquid as it gets further into our glass. And so, um, you know, the exact kind of value you want to work with here really comes down to the liquid you're trying to recreate. If it's something like a soda or um, something like a scotch, like I said, you know, that's going to have one value and it's, you know, still going to be pretty see-through. Okay, if it's something like orange juice or milk, well, not only will you have to work with the depth, but probably also a little bit of subsurface scattering in there um, because it's not quite as transparent. But um, honestly, this came out pretty good for um, what what uh, what I was looking for. And so, you know, for something like a scotch or more scotch than I suppose a soda, um, this could very well work. Now, there's one other thing I want to point out kind of render setting wise when it comes to uh, working with liquids, okay? And you may be looking at the liquids here and really I just need uh, the larger one. So the smaller one, you can go away. Um, you want to be careful because what you'll see is everything may look pretty good um, until you start to look at it really closely, right? The ice cube here looks really, really strange. And it might also be why we're getting some darker values towards the really um, uh, top of our liquid here. And that is how many times the light can bounce through or rays can bounce through uh, the transparent or even the reflective parts of our uh, materials here. And when you have something like glass with ice and liquids, and especially like the one on the left here has been simulated, um, it can be bouncing around a lot there. And redshift kind of limits how much um, the rays can bounce around before it just kind of stops doing those calculations. And uh, in this case, we need to raise those values. So what we need to do in our render settings is go to advanced mode and then go to globals. And what we're talking about here are the trace depths. So how many times rays can bounce off a reflective surface or go through a refractive surface. Um, so we need to raise these values and uh, we'll have to raise, you know, probably all three of these reflection just to be on the safe side refraction, but also combined since it deals with, you know, how many of all of these uh, total that, um, we want it to go through. And really what you want to do is just raise these as high as possible um, until you stop seeing changes. Uh, I also think going the other way makes sense. So go higher than you would need to. And then if things change, great, and start bringing things back down again. So it's really the combined one that now we'll start to see some really, really big changes because the light um, not so much the light, like I said, the the rays for reflection, for refraction, um, can now bounce off and through our our glass, our liquid, our ice cube there. Now, it really didn't seem to fix um, the one on the right, so that's probably more a lighting issue. Like I said, it might also still be a scale issue. Perhaps I wanted to scale this out just a little bit more, okay? Um, doesn't seem to be working, so then I would chalk it up to the lighting for causing that. But on the left here, big, big, big difference when we increase the reflection, the refraction, as well as the combined trace steps. And so at this point, what I would want to do is start turning those down so that I don't um, have these any higher than I need to, because that will take extra time to render, will make Redshift uh, do additional calculations as you know it tries to trace out and let things bounce um, more than it it needs to in this case. But that is essentially it for working with liquids from modeling them. Um, lighting was already in here, dome light in this case with an area light, but the materials um, and finally some render settings. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know and take care.